Hey, you YouTubers, this is Richard of GK Apprentice back with you for this week's Gravekeeper deck profile. Sorry I haven't gotten a deck profile to you guys in a few weeks, but the truth is I haven't had to tweak the deck. And I actually tweaked the deck immediately after posting my last deck profile, and I've been practicing this build since. And it is just rock solid. The speed is there, the power is there, and things are just going great. Um... If you've been testing this build, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you think of it. If not, please get ready for this week's deck profile. We're going to get started, and we're going to start with the monsters. And as always, I'm running three Gravekeepers Commandant. Search out my Necro Valley. And this card's been seeing a lot of field play because of things like Rite of Spirit. Loving its card right now. Three of the Gravekeeper Spy. My favorite Gravekeeper probably. It's just so useful if you can get its flip effect off, and I have been doing so a lot lately. Three of the Gravekeeper's Recruiters, a very, very powerful card. I like to set it. People don't know. People like to assume it's a spy, and it acts as a decoy a lot, and usually, without a hitch, gets its effect off. Two of the Gravekeeper's Descendant. Love this card. Also, I just like the Gravekeeper's Monsters, guys. Two Gravekeeper's Heretic. Bumped them back up to two in the main deck. He's just awesome, and there are times when I want to have two on board, and there are times when I get two on board. He's searchable with a recruiter, and he's he's great. One Gravekeeper Shaman making the main deck, as well as one of the Gravekeeper Assailant. That's going to end the monster lineup at 15 monsters this week. Moving on to spells, I'm running three Necro Valleys. I'm running two of the Gravekeeper Steela, which is great for searching Gravekeeper monsters out of the graveyard. Get recruiters effects off multiple times, Commandant's effect off multiple times. One Royal Tribute in the main deck. This card is working wonders for me lately. I'm very, very happy I moved it back to the main. Two Magical Dimensions. Uh, this is the MVP tech card of this deck. If you haven't tried this in your Gravekeeper build, get it in there. It just does amazing things. Moving along with the Wonder Wand, two of them. This lets me get my draw power up It lets and it... When when used with the recruiter, it's a plus three in some situations. I guess it's a plus one, but depending on how you play the card, it can be a plus three. Maybe you special summon the recruiter with the spy and then equip a wonder wand to it. Two mystical space typhoons and one book of moon to end the main deck spells. And moving on to the main deck traps, I'm running three imperial tombs of necro valley. Can stop anything so long as there's a gravekeeper monster and necro valley on the field when you activate the card. Three Rites of Spirit, amazing, amazing card in this deck. It lets you special summon a Gravekeeper monster from the graveyard, no strings attached. It's awesome for upping the field presence, using things like my Descendant twice, uh, special summon that Recruiter right back to get its effect off a second time if I want to. Two Fiendish Chain, one Black Horn of Heaven, one Solemn Morning, one Bottomless Trap Hole, one Compulsory Evacuation Device, and one Torrential Tribute to end the main deck at 41 cards. This is the most streamlined I've ever had my main deck. I know I had a 40-card build last time, but the 41-card build with the two Heretics is just working wonders for me, and if you try it out, I'm sure you'll experience similar results. Moving on to the extra deck now, going to start out with a Cyberin Dragon, in case I ever want to special summon a Malefic Cyberin Dragon. One of the number 101 Silent Honor Arcs. Love this card. He's just a very useful card in tight situations. Two of the number 66 Master Key Beetles. I like to use it to protect my Shaman. Two Gaga Ga Cowboys. I like to bring one out early game sometimes just to bait out uh, breakthrough skills, fiendish chains, things like that. Uh, gets the job done in late game too. We're going for the win. Number 85, Crazy Box. Great for things like Skill Drain, if you side that in like I do. Wind Up Zen Meister helps you get your Spies effect off twice in one turn. May Stroke the Symphony Gen. Photon Papler Operative. The number 50, Black Ship of Corn. Diamond Direwolf, up for a reprint this time in the Battle Pack 3. Gem Knight Pearl, and the number 69, Heraldry Crest. To end the rank 4s, and then a Levier the Sea Dragon to end the extra deck at 15 cards. Moving on to my side deck now. The side deck is really, really strong currently. I'm running two Kaiser Coliseums. Always a great decision. Uh, just helps you out a lot in most situations. My Dark Hole, 
It's got the Spellbook of Wisdom back on the side. It's a really useful card recently when people are trying to tribute my monsters and change controls of them and things like that. Two skill drains. One wire tap. One curse seal of the forbidden spell. One of my mirror forces. Don't need two. Don't need three as we're coming back up, but I will tell you guys, I might be trying to find room for dimensional prisons in this deck build soon. Light imprisoning mirror to end the sided traps, and then going into the fossil Dinah, Thunder King Ryo, a second Gravekeeper Shaman, second Gravekeeper's Assailant, and one Malefic Cyber and Dragon to end my side deck and conclude this week's deck profile for the Gravekeeper's Magic Tricks build, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any tips, comments, suggestions, or criticism, leave that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them, and I especially want to hear from you guys if you have been using these tech cards in this Gravekeeper's deck build. Uh, keep the comments coming. Keep the views coming, guys. Uh, good luck at Locals this week, and until next time, this is Richard signing off.